Hi, Matt Garrett here again and welcome back to the Niche Secrets tutorial videos. This is video number six and one of the most important ones because what we're going to look at in this is how to check the competition. In the previous videos we've looked at how to check that there's enough search volume to make sure that we're going to get enough traffic and how to check the value of the keyword to make sure that it is worth going after. In this one we're going to actually look at the competition because we need to make sure that we can rank on the first page of Google for the keyword within a reasonable amount of time with a reasonable amount of backlinking work. Okay, so this is a really important one where we need to check to make sure that we can rank for the keywords that we're interested in. Okay, before we actually start analyzing the competition on the page itself for these results, uh, let's cover a couple of myths or misunderstandings. Okay, first of all, some people will tell you that you need to do your search in quotation marks, okay? Uh, wrong, basically, totally irrelevant. It's not gonna make, the, it's not gonna give you any better data. Whoever searches in quotation marks, nobody does. People just type in what they wanna search on, so you should be doing the same. There is no reason to put your search term in quotation marks. Now, there is another thing that people advise you to do sometimes, which is to put either all in title or all in URL uh, in front of the search because what they're then saying is, well, though these are the actual competition, this is the actual number that you are competing with because these are the only ones, in fact, I need to put a colon there, I think it is. Um, these are the results that actually have your keyword in the title of the web page. In other words, those are ones that potentially have had some search engine optimization done and therefore they are more likely your competitors. The same with all in URL. So all in title is giving us quarter of a million, all in URL gives us just under quarter of a million, okay? So people out there will advise you that you should be doing the search with these different parameters and things like this. No, it's wrong, you don't need to. Get rid of all that, just go back to the keyword and search on that. And yes, okay, this figure here, 29 million, that could potentially look a little scary, couldn't it? But that's not really the number of competitors that you have. When you actually think about it on a logical level, it becomes quite obvious the number of competitors you have, it's the number of results on this first page. So these are our competitors here. These 10 results, these 10 sites that have actually managed to get onto the first page. That's really where we need to be to get traffic. So all these other sites, they're irrelevant. They may be sites and pages that include the words get rid of acne somewhere on them, but they are not our competitors. Our competitors, for all intents and purposes, are these top 10 sites, and in fact, the top five are really what we're looking at because we want to get into the top five positions on Google because that's where all the traffic is. Okay, let me quickly bring up a slide to show you exactly what I mean. This is a study, this is based on a study done by Cornell University, and it basically shows where the percentage of clicks go on the first page, on the different results on the first page of Google. Now you'll see straight away the vast majority go to that first position. So that's really where most of the traffic is going. And then it peters off or tapers off as you go down, down towards the bottom where there's a little bit of a spike again. But you can see that you really want to be in the top five or top six results. So what we wanna do when we're looking at the competition, when we're analyzing that information, is we really want to aim at being in the top five. So hopefully now you see what I mean when I say our competition isn't that scarily large 29 and a half million figure. Our competition are these top sites that at the very least it's the top 10, but preferably we want to get into these top five, one of these top five positions, preferably the top, but that's what we're aiming at. That's who our competition is. 
Okay, so the next thing we need is some simple but effective way of judging just how difficult it's going to be to rank in these top five positions. Okay, so let's scroll this down a bit. Uh, the first site is how to get rid of acne help.com. The fifth is how to get rid of acne v.net. Interesting choice of a domain there. Obviously, that guy's going for getting the keywords in, but the ones or the domains that he was after have all gone, so he's just stuck a V at the end. That does work. Okay, the simplest way of getting a snapshot idea of whether you're going to be able to rank in the top five, or at least how long roughly it's going to take you, is to add up the page rank and work out the average. So in this case, we've got six, 10, 11, uh, divided by five, roughly 2.3, 2.2, something like that. Okay, so we can work that out, the average page rank of the top five sites, or the top five results. What I'm then gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my spreadsheet, and I'm actually gonna pop that in there. Uh, I think it's 2.2, so the average page rank is 2.2. And basically what we're looking at is if the page rank, the average page rank for the top five sites is higher than three, then it's gonna take us five, six, seven, eight months to get ranked up at the top, up in the, the first, second, third uh, position. If it's below 2.5, then we should be able to do it within three to four months, maybe five. And if it's sort of one point or below two, then it's going to be sort of three months or less. Um, if the page ranks somewhere down like an average of one or 1 1.2, then you should be able to actually get in those top five results or at the very least on the first page within a month or so, okay, because the competition really isn't there. So that average page rank is a really simple way of giving you an idea of what the competition is and how quickly you're likely to be able to rank. And the magic figure there really for me is if it's page rank three or higher, it's something I'm gonna to have to put quite a lot of work into and I'm not gonna to expect to rank in those top five results for probably four, five, probably five to six months plus, okay? And I'm gonna to have to put a good bit of effort into the backlinking. If it's 2.5 or below, then I'm likely to go for it because I know I can probably get in the top five within three to four months, probably quicker without a great deal of effort, okay? So in this case, page rank average of 2.2, it looks good. It looks like something we should be going for. However, because we've got this plugin from SEO Quake, we've got a lot more data that we can look at. Uh, and don't forget, you need that plugin. You need to go to seoquake.com and grab the plugin for Google Chrome or for Firefox, Opera, or Safari so that we get this extra data here under each of the results. Okay, let's have a look at this information in a bit more detail. Now it's important to remember that PageRank is basically just a rough guide of how Google views a site or a page, and it's generally out of date. Um, so it's only a rough sort of figure to work on. What we really need to be looking at is the extra information that helps a site rank well. Now first of all, having the keyword in the domain and in the title or the URL will help your page or site rank. So if you're targeting a specific market or indeed a specific keyword, try and get a domain name with your keywords in that domain name, okay? It will make a difference. As you can see, this guy here, uh, his page ranks zero, but he's in the top five, and that's largely because he's got the keywords in the domain, he's got it in the title, he's got it in the description, and he's got 10 pages indexed, and he's gone out and got some backlinks. So you can see this guy has actually done minimum work, but he's ranked in the top five. You'll also notice the age of the domain. This is saying NA. It's probably a very new domain. <clears throat> if we scroll up to the top here, this one's June 4th, 2010. Uh, that one's 2003. So in theory, if the age of the domain was important, this one should be at the top. Okay, so don't worry about the age of the domain. That's another one of those fallacies. It, it can make a difference, but it doesn't make a big difference. What you're really looking at for ranking a site is trying to get the keywords in the domain, the title uh, and the description, because that's your on-page factors. Then it's really about the backlinks. You have to get a good number of backlinks to the page itself as well as the domain and the quality of those backlinks. So it's important where those backlinks come from and the anchor text used in the backlinks. So a site that links to your site, 
must include or should include your keywords. The more links you have including your keywords, the higher you will rank because Google sees those links as more relevant. You'll also see, or you'll also notice, that the number of pages indexed by Google doesn't have a massive difference. I mean, it can help a great deal if all of the pages are tightly gathered together on the actual topic of that niche. So for instance, in this case, how to get rid of help, uh, how to get rid of acnehelp.com would appear to have some good pages that are on related topics such as skincare, how to get rid of blackheads, so good LSI keywords. So that will help the authority of that site. Now if we go further down, this site's got 27,000 pages index, but this is how stuff works. So a lot of those will be either uh, just health-based or other subject-based rather than specifically for acne, okay? So don't be scared off by that kind of figure either. Um, and again, this one at the bottom here is a great example. There are only 10 pages indexed. This is a fairly new site. Uh, whoever it is has probably just started it reasonably recently, and they've not got that many backlinks. Now, that backlink figure, we can actually dig into that to see where the backlinks come from. So if I actually click on this, I can actually see either the links for this page itself or for the domain as a whole. Generally, the domain as a whole is going to be more useful. So if I click on that, it'll bring up Yahoo Site Explorer, and I can actually search through or scroll through and see where the links are coming from. Now, the main thing I'm looking for here is whether they're coming from authority sites such as .edu or .gov sites. Now, most of these look like fairly standard .com sites. Uh, if we scroll down, there's nothing too scary there. They're all just regular sort of sites, no authority sites that are showing up as far as I can tell. Uh, quick look down, there's .org, .fr. It looks like a good variety of links, but there's nothing there that would suggest it's got some heavyweight backlinks from real authority sites. But as you can see, being able to come straight across to Yahoo Site Explorer and look at the links or where those links are coming from gives us an extra insight into the links that this guy has got to his site. So the last thing I really want to do is check the anchor text for the backlinks that this guy's got. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the URL for his domain, just going to copy that, and I'm going to go across to another site that I use. This is called ahrefs.com, and you can get a free account for this, as I've got here, got a free account, and you get up to 20 requests per day that you can run. So you don't need to pay for this. There is a paid version where you can use it a lot more, but the free version will generally get you where you need to be. So we can then pop in our domain, click it or the domain that we want to have a look at and click on explore links and wait until it comes up with the information. And if we scroll down and click on backlinks and we can see where the links that he's got incoming are pointing to. So whether they're the home domain or a sub page. So he's obviously targeting a sub page here as well. And again, we can see the anchor text that's being used in those particular links. But an easy way of doing it is actually clicking on the anchors link, and this will give us a summary. So nine of the backlinks that he's got are specifically using the anchor text, how to get rid of acne. And he's got another one, another five links coming in with how to get rid of acne fast, and another five coming in with get rid of acne. So you can see he's not actually needed to get a lot of links, but because he's got those links, using the correct anchor text to target his keyword, he's been able to, uh, to actually rank in those top five results pretty quickly and easily and beat out other pages, other sites, okay? So this is the important bit. You want to have a look at this. Now this wouldn't scare me because there isn't a massive number of backlinks there. So I just need to get more than him. As long as I can get more than him, I can beat him out, providing I also have the on-page such as the keywords in the domain, the title and the URL. There's no reason why I can't get above this guy in the results. So this site here, this is ahrefs.com. Highly recommend getting uh, at least the free account of this and having a play with it because there's some great information that you can get from it. Um, the other pages also provide useful information as well as this summary. But let's go back and look at the Google results again. And if we scroll down a bit and have a look at the results that are below, you can see that although this guy's only got page rank zero, there are results below that have page rank two, that have more backlinks, 
more content indexed. So you can see that with the right structure, the right tactics, for instance, getting your keywords in the title, the domain, the description, and getting good backlinks with the keywords in the anchor text, you can beat out other sites fairly quickly and easily. But ultimately, what we want to do is get into that first position. Okay, so we've ascertained that yes, within a month or two, we should probably at least be on the first page, probably up here in result five, maybe four. But ultimately, we want to be aiming at that first position. So probably want to re repeat the process of digging into the backlinks for this top site to see where they're coming from, whether he's using the right anchor text, which keywords he's actually choosing to target to give us an idea of whether we can eventually, after five or six months, push this guy out of the top position as well, because that's what we want. That's where the majority of the traffic is going to be. However, as a brief summary, I would certainly be very, very happy to go after this keyword because I know I can get in the top five and there is the possibility of getting up to the top position and getting the lion's share of the traffic in the longer term once we start adding extra pages that target other keywords, related keywords for this niche. So instead of actually just targeting a specific keyword, we have a bunch of related content that widens the site out into a niche site rather than just a keyword targeted site. And that's what we're actually going to look at in the next video. Okay, so now you know how to actually analyze the competition to make sure that you can rank on the first page of Google for the keywords that you've chosen to make sure that it's actually going to be worth you taking the time and effort to build the site around those keywords. So that's video six. In tomorrow's video, video number seven, we're going to show you, first of all, how to record the data and to actually repeat the process, but the reasoning behind it, because what you then need to do is take that initial keyword and expand it into a niche so that you can actually get authority from having a site that dominates a niche rather than just a keyword. So as always, keep your eyes open for the email in your inbox tomorrow with the link for video number seven. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow.